As I was brainstorming and sketching up some ideas this week, I came up with an idea using this orb here that I think is going to be pretty cool. However, it's a logistical nightmare. Allow me to explain. For the sake of demonstration and to better illustrate how all of this is going to work, we'll shrink things down to this little orb here. Now all the concepts you're going to see though will translate to the larger one that you just saw as well as other container shapes and sizes. Anyway, I've got the orb and this tray filled up with water. What I'll do is place this lid over the orb so I can flip it over without spilling the water. Place it in here and remove this lid. And if I do this properly and carefully lift it up, because I recorded this several times by now and pulled it up too far, you can see that the orb is completely filled with water. Now essentially the way this all works is that the water down in this area here is creating a plug or a seal that holds all of the water inside of the orb as you see. Now my idea is to take this concept of having water inside of an orb and blow it up to a larger scale with that one I showed earlier and create an ecosphere or something of that nature that will look pretty cool and be a standalone piece. So it's not like this is sitting on top of an aquarium or anything like that. The orb itself is the aquarium. I'm sure that you've seen other projects that utilize these concepts, such as aquarium bridges or even the above water pond viewers, but the idea I have in mind for this is a little different. Here's my sketch for reference. As you'll see, I have the orb on top and it's upside down. That's self-explanatory. There's a little more going on on the bottom though. I have a pump on the right that will circulate water up into the orb. I also have various tubes on the left that will create a drain. In the center are a few pipes that will hold up the structure and create a spot for substrate. Similar to what I did with the no opening terrarium. And you should know by now that it's going to be a lot more complex than just filling this with water. As I said, it's a little bit of a logistical nightmare, but we'll make it happen. As you saw in the sketch, I'm going to need a container for the bottom, and that's what I have right here. You'll notice that it's similar to the one that we used in last week's video, which was from Ikea. And this one is too, but it's slightly taller and it has an opening in the back. I'm going to have to make some modifications though, so the base of the orb here fits through the lid. Simple enough. To start, I taped along the lid to easily mark for the center. Luckily, I have a hole saw. That's the exact size I need to create an opening. I drilled through, which allowed the orb to fit in the lid. This won't work though. And like I said, I'll elevate it with pipes. I stacked ABS couplings for reference and to determine how tall the pipe should be. I measured from the top of the bottom coupling accordingly. Then I transferred this measurement to the PVC pipe and cut it down to size. This fit into everything as it should, but it's too large for the orbs opening. I knew it would be prior to starting, but that's where this belt sander comes in. I sanded down the tip to make for a perfect fit. I need to attach this to the orb itself. I applied silicone along the pipe and pressed the orb into it. I'll secure this to the coupling as well. I applied pipe cement to these pieces and locked them together. I did this in the container to set everything to the appropriate depth. I let this sit for 24 hours and you'll see now that it's one continuous piece. I want to explain why I did what I did here though before we continue onward. Everything you'll see here is a translation from my sketch. So you see up top where I sanded the PVC, it actually goes inside of the orb a little bit and that's so that I could build up substrate around the perimeter. I sanded this in a way that it's tapered. That way when I put the orb on top, it tightens itself as it goes down. As such, I was able to just use silicone to seal it off. I could have used PVC for the entire length of this, but it was actually a lot easier for me to get the appropriate height since I could adjust it within the coupling. It's also a little bit wider at the base, so it probably makes things slightly more stable. Of course, all of this supports the orb in the upright position, but it also serves another function. If I were to use this as is without attaching this piece, say if I just stuck the orb right in the water, I would always have to have the water line right below the lip here. If it'd go any lower, it would break the seal and everything would drain out. Extending this down to the bottom here actually makes it so that I could have the water level as low as the very bottom of the ABS coupling and still have this orb completely full of water. Another cool feature that I built into all of this 
has to do with the length of this pipe. You'll see that as I put it into the container here, it's not completely flush with the lid. I did this for a very specific reason, and that of course is maintenance. At some point, I'm gonna have to access everything down in here like the pump, and I'd wanna be able to do that without lifting this up and breaking the seal. So having a little bit of space in between the pieces actually allows me to lift up the lid and turn it to the side like this, giving me access to the bottom. And then it's just as simple as turning it back, we're good to go. In line with those features, I made modifications to everything that you see here. First, I drilled some holes along the bottom of the ABS pipe. I did this so that I can feed various airline tubes and different things up through the bottom without pulling the piece off. You'll also see that I added a few components to the back side of this container. I did that so I could easily just pull a valve to do a water change, making everything easy to care for. I'll talk more about all of that later on, but the challenge I'm facing at this moment is how do I get this piece of driftwood inside of this container? I felt that the best way around this was just to chop it up into smaller pieces. Definitely not the ideal scenario, but at least I'm able to fit them. Even so, it was still difficult to get them through the opening. Eventually I did, and I was able to make it all look cohesive. I wanted to tie in some stones as well. I fit them in just like the wood, but that was easier said than done. I don't know about you, but I like the combination of elements. With this addressed, I can now move on to the substrate. I couldn't just put it in by hand though. I taped a cup to a wire to make it happen. Well, that was the plan at least. I don't know why I do this to myself. These builds where I have one entry point and it's really meticulous to place the elements are super difficult to pull off. And with this one, I got the scape set relatively easy, but I noticed that as I'm trying to add this substrate and even more so when I go to add the plants, it's very difficult for me to get up in there without wrecking this entire scape. So I think it's probably best to lock them together and I'll use some expanding foam for that. Naturally, this was extremely difficult. I couldn't use this with the default spray piece and instead stuck an RO tube on the end. I also drilled a hole directly through my table so I could access the bottom without moving the container. Don't worry, I'm replacing this soon so it's not really a big deal. Anyway, that made it possible to apply the foam on the inside from the outside. Afterward, I went back and trimmed it to the best of my ability. This made it much easier to add the substrate using the tool from before. However, just after that, everything took a turn for the worse. Getting my hand up inside of here is hard enough on its own, but combine that with a pair of tweezers and a plant, and it's basically impossible. The substrate also kept spreading out, which normally isn't an issue, but for this one, I just couldn't get the plants to stay put. I decided to cap it with gravel to make that job easier. I ventured on to make a custom set of tweezers. It took several iterations with various materials to get here, but this is what I ended up with. I was really excited to give them a try, but my studio light had different ideas. It fell over and knocked the orb on the floor. That of course ruined the entire scape, so I had to go back and adjust everything, and here we are after that. Now at this point, we're finally ready to plant this thing. And as much as I'd love to tell you that these tweezers work perfectly, they just don't. I can't get a proper grip on anything with them, so they're basically useless. In short of designing something else completely from scratch, which I really don't feel like doing right now, this just isn't gonna work. So as much as I wanted to deck it out with various stem plants, I'm gonna cut my losses and I'll stick to epiphytes like these Anubias. Might not create the look I wanted, but it will be a lot easier to pull off. Anubia seemed like the perfect remedy, and it certainly was. Wedging it between hardscape elements was still difficult, but I was able to make it happen within the limitations at hand. When I first began using these, I assumed I wouldn't like them as much as stem plants. That said, I'm really pleased with the result, and quite honestly, it probably worked out for the better. Even so, I still need to address the exposed foam and hole. Both are an easy fix. I'll just use Java Moss to hide the foam. As for the hole, I'll simply cover it up with this stone. I know that it's the perfect size because I planned for this earlier, and it's a surprisingly easy solution. Now going back prior to doing any of the scape, I combined acrylic and vinyl tubing along with various airline components to create a system to install a pump. With this, I can easily gain access to the interior of the orb while also having control of the tube's length. 
Sending this up into the orb was really easy. Once I did, I added the top cover of the container and an RO tube to remove air. Then I placed it all on the base and got to filling. This wasn't difficult, but it was time consuming. I had to add the water little by little as I sucked air out of the top. As I did, I had to plug the tube between breaths or the orb would drain. However, just as I was about to complete the fill, another problem emerged. I noticed that the bulkhead was leaking, and as it would turn out, I over tightened it and cracked it. Now I don't have a replacement, and as annoying as it was, I had to drain the entire thing and start over with a different base. Luckily, draining the water isn't as hard as I thought, so it's not a big deal to omit the drain. Anyway, I went on to snip the airline and hook it up to the pump. Then I closed up the lid and we're good to address the final details. Although this should be a low maintenance setup, doing anything will be at the very least tedious. Wiping down the acrylic will have to happen the most, which is why I installed this mini magnet cleaner. I attached this earlier so I can easily wipe away debris. As for trimming plants and such, well, I'll have to just cross that bridge when the time comes. Otherwise, I just had to add this light. Introducing what was hands down one of the most challenging projects I've done to date, the no opening Ecosphere Orb. Despite all of the hardships I faced with this, I'm very glad to have it complete to share with you. At times I thought I'd have to scrap it all together, but I made it happen. This is definitely up there with the Hourglass Terrarium and Klein Bottle Terrarium as one of the hardest projects I've done to date. That's partly why I didn't even put snails in this. I'm sure they would do fine, but given the difficulty to do maintenance, I think it's best to keep it simple. That said, this is very much a prototype. I think with some refinement and an increase in scale, there's much more I could do with this concept. All things considered, I really like the result, but I want to know what you think. Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like for my efforts, it would be greatly appreciated. That's all I have for now though. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.